Welcome back. You're watching ED Insight. India is considered one of the world's fastest growing economies and a potential economic superpower. However, the scams of the past few years have taken their toll on the economy. Investors have become increasingly wary of doing business here. So how can we as a nation clean up our act? Earlier, I spoke with Yuget Labelle, chairperson of Transparency International, who joined us from Berlin and began by asking her, how badly has India's global image been damaged by the recent wave of scandals? Well, you know, any country that has major scandals coming out one after another, um, you know, this, this really brings the attention of the world as well as the people of the country uh, to the issue of corruption. And in a way, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, these scandals are a wake-up call and uh, create a situation where uh, the political leaders, as well as others in society, decide that it's time to do something about it. Sure, but what's the economic cost of corruption in a country like India you get, since it directly drives up cost of doing business? You know, the economic cost is huge. Uh, there's been a number of studies, you know, that have been done, but the Global Financial Integrity Group, a uh, very reliable group, um, estimate that about 19 billion U.S. Um, leaves uh, India every year uh, through illicit, you know, illicit flows, whether it's tax evasion, money laundering, or the like. Um, and this represents about 16.6 percent of India's GDP. Now, it doesn't say anything about the informal economy, which is, of course, very high, um, and it doesn't really deal with um, some of the money that is lost to development. You know, the money that gets lost within the country um, when people um, take some of those resources of the Treasury for their own purpose. So would you look at the new Lokpal bill as an evidence of newfound will within the system to fight corruption? And is the Lokpal bill the right approach at all? If you really need, in every country, very strong anti-corruption institutions and I think that bill could provide for that but you know anywhere when you have an anti-corruption commission an ombudsman call it uh, what you want uh, what you need is for that institution to be totally independent from the executive to have the kinds of resources and expert people who can do the investigations and proceed to justice towards prosecution uh, with due dispatch. So, you know, if you don't have that, you can have a bill, but it'll be a piece of paper. So you need to have this very, because facilitators of corruption are very sophisticated today, people who launder money from one end to the other. So you need, especially for economic crime, to have uh, teams of people who are forensic auditors, who are lawyers, who are uh, strong information technology specialists to be able to do these investigations and of course you need the cooperation of other countries because the money travels around the world with the globalized situation that we have so I think this bill in in hopefully will uh, you know will eventually come to fruition but it's what's in the bill that will be very important for India at this time. You get what you're saying is that it's not just the law, but the enforcement of the law that's important. Now, if you look at the Lokpal bill, it actually envisages members from the civil society policing administrators. Now, is that a practical solution, that, given that India is already a democracy in any case? Yes, I think that there's a lot of practical solutions in there. But I think that, you know, the, the Department of Justice um, you need parliamentarians to come together with the civil society organizations and look at these provisions and make sure that they are not weakened. So what are the regulatory or systemic changes you would recommend to reduce corruption in India? You know, I'm not an expert on all the details of regulatory law, you know, regulations in India. I think it's very important for all that is paid to government from wherever. Uh, and whatever group needs to be made public and highly accessible. Now, lobbying as of now is illegal in India. Do you think, A, it should be legalized, and B, will it really help curtail corruption? One of the big dangers with uh, under-the-table lobbying is that people do not know 
uh, who is influencing the government. And there's a great danger uh, with, very, with lobbying that has a lot of money behind it, that basically what you have is capture of the policy agenda of the government and push back on some of the legislation which the government ought to introduce, um, you know, push back in terms of either not having it or having it in a much diluted manner. So I think that for the people, it's very important uh, that they know who are the lobbyists. And this is where uh, lobby uh, legislation, but with a public registry, uh, I think that's the part which is important because if you have legislation and uh, that it is secret that you know people register but that register is not public, mm -hmm. I think that that does not take us very right. far. Now that's all we have for you in this edition of ED Insight. We'll be back next week but until then, don't forget to write in with your feedback and suggestions. Thanks so much for watching.